enough is enough we have been talking on and on about different data structures and their technical aspects and their time complexities without talking about the most important thing with them that is that how they are important to us in the real world and that is why i decided to make this video where we are going to talk about number one why data structures are important number two how choosing the right data structure versus the wrong data structure can actually make or break your entire system plus we will learn about 10 real life problems where i'm going to show you that depending on the problem and requirement which data structure are we choosing why are we choosing that and which data structures not to choose now the first question comes to our mind is that why does data structure even matter for the system design and to understand that rather than considering the technical aspect of data structure let's try to understand the real world scenario well typically data structure is nothing but a way to store the data or values so let's consider the, an example of a real life phone book now in the phone book we all know that all the values are stored in the alphabetical order now in this phone book imagine that i want to find the number for patrick the plumber what would be my approach my approach would be quite simple i would first of all go to the index then i would go to the page number that starts with letter p until i find the person or the patrick the plumber that i'm looking for and i would be able to find this maybe within 10 15 seconds consider another scenario where all the names are still present in the phone book but they are jumbled up they are just randomly placed so patrick the plumber can be on the first page or on the last page or anywhere in between what would happen in this scenario if i want to find the number of patrick how long do you think will it take for me to find that number imagine that i'm a person with the worst luck and now in this case uh, the number of patrick the plumber is actually located on the last page on the very last line and i start from the beginning it will at least take me five six hours before i fi uh, finally end up finding the number i was looking for and why did that happen because the data was not organized properly and the structure was not there and just with this example you can imagine how powerful it is to store the data in the appropriate manner depending on the application first let's make some assumptions clear number one assumption i'm making is at least you have the basic idea that what different data structures are and what do they do if not i would encourage you to go ahead and check out my video on overview of data structures it is going to be really helpful Number two, I want you to understand that what are the time complexities for each and every data structure. And I can imagine that it's difficult to memorize these things. Neither you should try to memorize it. So for that, here is a very good cheat sheet. So take the screenshot of this. Now for the case study number one, we are actually trying to see that how can we find out the connection between any two people in a social media. Uh, this is a very good real life scenario we use this in linkedin facebook instagram all the other places now we want to find out that if we are given the values of two different people how can we determine that are they friends of each other are they friends of friends or are they friends of friends of friends or maybe something else so for that we have actually multiple options of data structures to choose from but ideal data structure in this scenario is going to be graph where we are going to treat every single person as a node inside a graph and their connection so if they are friends with each other we are going to create a link pointing from one one node to another node now in this fashion imagine if you are given n number of nodes uh, some of them are connected with each other and some of them are not connected with each other overall they form this entire social network where we can actually find links between any two people by doing a breadth first search algorithm between those two values and that would give us that how many number of connections are there in between these two people and how how closely they are related with each other so this approach is actually quite good if we see time and space complexity in this manner the time complexity is actually going to be the time complexity to take for us to complete the breadth first search algorithm and that takes typically we go of v plus e where v is the number of vertices and e is the number of edges so this would be the most optimal solution but imagine in this scenario rather than using a graph you are actually using an array to store the information for any single node how many number of friends it has now in this scenario if you try to find the connection between any two people the number is actually going to be in the exponential time complexity that is disastrous so that is why you should be choosing graph in this kind of scenario now let's try talk about case study number two that is search engine indexing 
Now, what does search engine indexing means that there are web pages currently stored in many different areas and many different places and they are all associated with their importance and what are the type of tags and keywords are present in there. So whenever you type something in the Google, Google immediately finds you the result you are looking for within milliseconds and how it is able to do it is that it actually stores all the information that you are searching for with the appropriate hash maps and on top of that with these hash maps it is also giving rank to every single web page as well that how important and how relevant these web pages are so that is why the indexing is quite quick it is you can consider this like an, a dictionary or a phone book where all you need to do is go to that particular specific hash and then fetch the appropriate value so usually the time complexity is nearly in big of one time or constant time and that is what we experience on a day-to-day -day basis but in the same scenario imagine that if we were using some data structure like array or linked list well our time complexity would go to big o of n but in this case n is a significantly higher number because we know that there are millions or billions of web pages in the internet so if we want to find the answer that we are looking for it would probably take us hours or even days depending on the search query that we are trying to put out which google is able to do it within seconds so that is why uh, choosing the right data structure for this type of scenario would be hash map or hash table now let's consider the example for online gaming leaderboard now we all know that there are a lot of games and people play all the time and some players are above the other players and depending on the ranking they have uh, the numbers keeps on going up and down now for this scenario if you want to build up a system like these the ideal way to build would be to have a sorted set or a heap as a data structure that is going to keep track of all the people in the sequential manner so why we are using heap because of course the retrieval and the storing is actually in big of log and time so that is a very fast approach because in any game let's say a game like call of duty or fortnite millions of players are playing all across the world and they all of their scores has to be on the leaderboard so that's why you need a system where you can very quickly insert values on top of that very quickly retrieve values as well so that is why choosing an array in this scenario would be disastrous because we would no, never be able to reach to the result we are looking for now let's talk about an e-commerce inventory management system what do you think is the data structure we should be using well if you guessed hash map you are correct because that would be the ideal choice in this scenario where in the hash map as the key we are going to store whatever the value or whatever the product that we are referring to and as the value we are going to define its quantity so that would give us the real time uh, very fast retrieval of all the values that how many number of uh, quantity we have currently so if someone is ordering that quantity we can know that immediately that whether we have that much quantity at our hand or not and then depending we can move ahead with the transform a transaction and uh, that person can start paying so this scenario would actually yield us the time complexity of big o of one in relatively all the average cases scenario but let's say that if we were to use an array or linked list in this scenario the time complexity would be big o of n and essentially to conduct that whether we have the sufficient quantity of any product or not we would take maybe 10 15 minutes just to get that information what would happen to a customer during that time that customer would get bored and he would probably go to some other website which is actually using a hash map so that is why choosing the right data structure is the right choice and hash map would be the right choice in this scenario now next use case is compiler syntax checking now we all use the very smart compilers for our day-to-day -day programming use things like eclipse or intellij where we all deal with lot of lines of code and all the codes are typically coded in some sort of either curly square or round brackets and depending on the sequence they were opened that has to be the sequences that they has to be closed now compilers are smart enough to identify that whether you have correct sequencing for opening and closing brackets or not and for that what do you think should be the data structure to be used well one very smart and very good way to implement this system is actually using a stack because stack is a data structure where all the values that are sequentially inputted comes out in the other order so that gives us very clear idea and we would be able to solve this problem using stacks quite easily 
so in this case the time complexity for stack would be typically big o of n which is a decently good enough time complexity to achieve the task that we are trying to do if we try to use any other data structure like maybe an array or queue it would be quite a headache to maintain all the inputs and outputs and uh, we would have to tweak a lot of things just to get it working but with stacks it would be it can be implemented within five minutes so that is why stack would be the right choice in this scenario now let's talk about network packet buffering. What is network packet buffering? Well, we all have used like Zoom calls or played online video games where all the transactions or all the communication actually happen through network packets. Now we want these packets to come in a particular sequence. We don't want them to be out of order because if they are out of order, what would happen? You, you, your user experience would not be very good and you would actually get frustrated with the system. So the best way to implement this is going to be using any sort of a smart queue or even a regular queue where you take care of all the incoming packets and you only display them in the sequence that they were received. So that's why that would be the ideal choice. If we want to check any like suboptimal or bad solution in this case, well, there are actually quite a few. You can use array, link list, hash map, any of these things won't actually work in this scenario and Q would be the most optimal choice and most sensible way. Now let's talk about the undo functionality. Now we all know what undo functionality is. Whenever we go on click on any website and we want to go back to our path, essentially we hit the undo button and we reach back to the state we were before. So very good way to implement this is actually using stack once again, because stacks has the capability of last in first out. So we want to go back to the last state we were at and that can be quite easily done using stack. Now in this scenario, if you, if you were to use a link list or a queue, your results would not be that great and you would not be able to complete the solution in the desired time you want it. Now let's talk about file system navigation. So if you want to navigate through file system, uh, we all know what file system is. It is a hierarchical structure folder. So you have the root folder, then you have a folder name study, then you have a folder name uh, physics, then you have a folder name quantum computing, something like that. So that would be the sequence of flow where you are go going down in one particular path to retrieve an information. Now in this scenario, what would be the ideal choice for data structure? Well, most important data structure would be to use a tree because tree is actually very good whenever you need to go hierarchical in any particular order and this would be a perfect use case for that. So that's why a tree would be the correct choice. If you were to use a hash map in this scenario, you would not yield any successful result. So again, see hash map is a very powerful data structure, same way a tree is, but depending on the scenario and use case, you need to pick one over the other. Next one is autocomplete suggestion. Now, autocomplete suggestions, we all use it on day to day on our phones or emails. Uh, whenever we are trying something or we are typing something automatically, it suggests us what we are trying to do. Even if we try some wrong word, still it automatically suggests us and prompts us with the correct solution. So the data structure in this case that is being used is a, a typical try where try is a sequential tree like data structure, but it goes in lexicographical manner uh, of all the different characters and that makes a word. So that is why like real life applications for try is going to be like Google search auto completion or Apple iPhone, whenever you're trying something and it auto corrects or auto completes all of the stuff. And in this case, the time complexity is actually going to be the length of that particular word. But if you were to use some suboptimal structure, like let's say array or strings, well, essentially the time complexity would be in big O of number of characters multiplied by total number of word length that you are trying to make. So it would be quite huge and quite disastrous. So that is why try would be a good choice in this, these type of scenarios that if you want to allocate appropriate memory in any particular operating system. So let's say that this is a scenario of dynamic memory allocation. Now, if you want to dynamically allocate memory for a continuously growing or shrinking type of data structure, what should be the optimal choice? Well, of course, in your mind, it's going to click that you have to use a linked list in this scenario. 
and why link list would be the right call because link list is not dependent on a fixed chunk of memory you can have one block here and one block here and one block here and all they need to do is point to each other so whenever you need to retrieve anything you can do it so this would be an efficient manner to store or allocate memory for a dynamically growing or shrinking list and uh, a bad example in this scenario would be an array because array you need to have a fixed size and fixed chunk of memory so that is not a very good way to allocate memory in this case so now you understood that how depending on the use case and depending on the properties of data structure you can actually make these connections amongst we each other and you will try to find the uh, most important and most fit data structure depending on the requirement that you have now there are few best practices that you should always follow that first understand your requirements understand that what is going to be the memory efficiency of the problem that you are trying to solve and what type of data structure has a similar memory efficiency so that way you would be able to relate them quite easily with each other on top of that you also have to think about scalability so what do i mean by scalability let's say that you you have a page with just 10 names on it and you are trying to find patrick the plumber you would be able to find it within a minute but what if same thing happens with a thousand page book then it would take hours so that is how you should think about scale that will my solution work for 10 number of uh, inputs will it work for thousand will it work for million and will it work for a billion so what would be the data structure of ideal choice when you consider the scale as well on top of that many times you will have to consider the trade-off between time complexity and space complexity so a good rule of thumb is that in most scenario you what you need to save up on is actually time complexity because computation can go out of hand really quickly as the number of inputs increase space complexity you can still manage with having like an additional ram or additional hard drive what are some of the common pitfalls that you should avoid well number one is that do not consider the data structure that already has limitations so let's say that if I want to build out a structure like uh, an undo functionality, I should not be using a queue because I already know that I want to go down in a certain way and come back in the reverse order. So for that stack would be the a logical and appropriate choice. I should not be focusing or putting my efforts trying to change the characteristics of queue while stack already has that option available for us. Second thing is don't ignore the complexity because you will need to understand that what are the time complexity for different operations and what are the solutions you are trying to achieve. So combining these two with the time complexity sheet I showed you earlier is going to be greatly helpful whenever you are trying to come up with the different data structure depending on your system design problem. On top of that, don't optimize prematurely. Understand first that depending on your scale and size, are you able to come up with the solution? and then only try to optimize if the wheel is already built don't try to recreate the wheel and try to see that what are the existing factors you can use to come up with the solution so in my personal opinion this is all i wanted to talk about let me know in the comments what do you think about this video uh, is there anything i missed or i could have done better i am always looking and open for suggestions so good luck with your preparation